Hello guys, welcome back to Not Just Make, it's Marco here and today we talk about how to make your gaming bases really indestructible. Our gaming models suffer a lot of stress when we move them around during a game and in general every time we move them from the safety of the shelf. And uh, bases are usually the first victim of all this uh, physical stress. So in this video I'll show you a simple technique that made the happiness of every war gamer I met. Let's start creating the base structure of our base. To represent rocks I usually use bark chips. They have an infinite range of dimensions and uh, interesting shapes. They are light and easy to cut and refine in the shapes you need, and uh, they are super easy to glue together and to other materials, using PVA, super glue, or even hot glue. Here I'm using super glue to speed up the process. As you can see, you can sculpt the shape you're looking for just uh, using your hands or simple tools like a cutter or uh, a pair of nippers. So, a lot of benefits and almost no downsides compared to stuff like plaster and real rocks like slates. And another important feature is that it uh, works uh, really well with the technique used to make the base super solid. The schleam is then repurposed for later batches. With the basic structure in place, I can move to the second base to give the glue some time to dry. Here I want to do something even faster and simpler, something that can be prepared in a couple of minutes for a basic trooper of an army. I start applying to the base a generous coat of PVA glue. To make you understand the quantity I'm using, the idea here is to cover all the black of the base. You have to stop in the moment you don't see the black in transparency. Now you can start adding your details. I do this step before the ground texture, because the details will be blended better with all the rest and uh, you'll have the sensation that they are really part of the ground, with uh, their own weight, and uh, not only sitting on top of it. You can really use everything in this step, really, really everything. Here I'm using bricks, real little branches, cocktail toothpicks to represent uh, broken wood planks, and leftovers of um, dust from old works. Try always to tell a story, even with your gaming bases, and you'll see that the whole model will gain a lot of depth. Time for the second step. This will be the same for the two bases, so I gave the same coat of PVA to the rocky base. Here I use some extra care while applying the glue because I'm using the PVA also to seal the junctions between uh, the rocks, to make them look uh, at the end like a single entity. I don't cover everything because I want to maintain the interesting shapes and natural texture of the bark. So I put the PVA only on flat and boring spots and again where I have to hide my own crimes. Now we can add our textures. For the job I use sand, it's simple sand taken from the seaside with a lot of uh, different rocks and stuff inside, and uh, real dirt, real earth from my garden. If you want to represent natural materials, it's always better to use natural materials. Really, you don't need to buy this stuff. A walk in the park can provide basic materials for years. I like to apply my texture using a spoon and pouring the material gently over the base. This way my details stay in place without moving, as well as the glue that having its own mass and volume can move a lot if you flip the base to catch the sand. 
At first I apply just a bit of sand and little rocks in a very loose way, then I cover everything with my ground dirt, being really careful to reach all the difficult and hidden spots, especially on the rocky base. And now we wait 15-20 minutes. There! Pretty as a picture! After this little time, this kind of concentrated PVA is almost completely dry, so we can lift the base and give a very gentle shake. We want to be careful here because in this stage only the bottom layer of material is glued for real to the base. We want to preserve the upper layers of texture for the next stage, even if they are not glued to the base. So be gentle and give just a couple of taps on the back of the base, only to remove the extreme excess. If you are using a weak PVA, even flipping the base upside down could be enough. And now the trick that will make your bases really indestructible, binding everything together in something able to handle any kind of stress. The idea is to glue the upper and external layers of dirt and sand that are still loose and only partially glued to the rest of the base. You can try using diluted PVA to do the job, but as you can see in this little experiment here, the surface tension of the mix is really high. So, if you put it gently on the base, a drop remains perfectly on top. You can push a bit the mix inside the base with a brush, but this will ruin your texture and will make you lose a lot of time. To avoid all this trouble and ensure to have all fixed and sealed well together by the glue, I use a two-step trick used by railroad modelers. Using a dropper, I apply to the base a mix of 50% water, 50% isopropyl alcohol or methylated spirit. This is a thing that sometimes is called wet water. This will break the surface tension of the homemade scenic glue we are going to use in the second step. We need just to wet the surface, so try to avoid floating your base. Immediately after this step, I apply my mix of 75% water, 25% PVA, plus a couple of drops of dish soap. As you can see, now the glue is freely moving inside the texture, reaching every single little detail. Again, be gentle and controlled. We don't want to float the base. And now we have just to wait, but uh, this time the drying time will be pretty quick because alcohol is going to evaporate in minutes, leaving just a small amount of water and uh, even a smaller amount of PVA still to dry. I left the bases under the sun in a ventilated area for uh, one hour and uh, they are already super solid and ready to be painted. Everything is sealed and all the layers are perfectly bonded between them and to the plastic base itself. This way I have a whole variety of different textures, from uh, big rocks to fine dust, strong enough to be constantly touched uh, while playing and moving the models around. Keeping in mind that these could be bases for an army, I'm applying a simple and solid paint job using mostly a quick dry brush of uh, progressive lighter layers. On the rocky base I'm looking for a canyon desert Mars style and on the other one for something that can fit Mordheim or the war cry setting, like a greyish ground covering dust and ash. I'm also using contrast paints to give some different tones to the various details. At the end, to recover a bit of saturation, I do a quick wash of Army Painter Red Wash on the rocky base and Null Noil on the other one. The effect comes really to life when you finish painting the black border. So, here we are with our undestructible gaming bases. 
I added some extra details just to show you that uh, this is only the beginning talking about the paint job and the general aesthetic but uh, the main topic of this video is resistance and durability and this is something it's already over the top in this basis now you can move and play forever with your armies without uh, losing a single grain of sand If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe. Remember that you can always ask me anything down below with a comment and uh, you can follow my projects during the week using uh, one of my socials. So, see you next week, guys!